By the time the final lap comes up, Cale Yarbrough has about a three-second lead over second place Richard Petty. David Pearson has to settle for third. Benny Parsons fourth. Bobby Allison, who had some transmission troubles, takes on the fifth-place money. Cale eased his Monte Carlo toward victory lane with tender love and care, for it's here that he ran out of gasoline. The crew didn't want to call Cale in for gas. They figured he had just enough to make it, and they were right. Driving a very well-balanced race through our of a great racing driver. We set it right at the top of the show. We set it right at the beginning. And, of course, you were seeing it in action. Richard Petty, who's had more experience of winning in this racetrack than anybody else. And there's the prize money. First prize, $31,050. Second prize, $13,750. And third place, $8,700. Big payoff, as you saw, flashed on your screen, and the race, of course, run under the sanction of NASCAR. And there's lots of action coming up for you down the road, including the Carolina 500, which will be run at Rockingham. And you'll have action at Richmond, Virginia. And the checkered flag is out. Here comes Richard Petty. The white flag falls on David Pearson. One more lap to go. About one more mile. Can he make it? Suddenly, it happens on the back chute. Second place, Bobby Allison runs out of gasoline. He'll coast to the finish line and with a very quiet engine. David Pearson charges right out of the middle of the fourth turn onto the long front straight and fires his Mercury under the checkered flag. Winner of the 18th annual Rebel 500. One more lap and David Pearson will win his third consecutive Winston 500. Benny Parsons is hanging in for a very close second and Richard Petty has just taken over third. flag out for David Pearson, and Mr. Cool does it again. However, in the past, he's won by bigger margins than this. He crossed the line just 17 one-hundredths of a second ahead of Benny Parsons.
coming down out of turn number four, coming down past the start-finish line. And Pearson backs off for Petty. Something wrong with Pearson. Petty takes the lead. And Petty Pearson backed off of it. It looks almost as he ran out of pitch or something. I've never seen anything like this happen before. It could be very bad luck for him, but my goodness, what an advantage. Richard Petty, the crowd are absolutely on their feet and yelling. Richard Petty's got an enormous advantage. Three or four hundred yards, it looks like, on that back straight away. Down there at almost 200 miles an hour. And there is David Pearson falling back on this very last of this fantastic race, but he seems to be closing up, Keith. To have stopped so suddenly, to have suddenly slowed up like that makes me think, though, Jackie, he backed off on purpose because obviously he's still got horsepower and he's now closed it right in behind Richard Petty as they turn and come for home. Ken Pearson slingshot him as he comes down low. Petty may run him into the fence and it's going to be Pearson winning it. An incredible, daring move and it paid off for David Pearson. A year ago, Junior and Herb teamed with Hale for a victory here. Two years ago, they were the mechanics on Bobby Allison's winning car. Yarbrough Chevy is running like a watch, even though he nearly hung it on the wall hundreds of miles ago when he spun to avoid Allison and Panch on the third turn. This track has been good to Yarbrough, but he'd probably agree with Bobby Allison. He said, you never can figure it out. There's something mysterious about this track. One time it's good for you, other times it's like your mother whipping you. The checkered flag waves as K.O. Yarbrough wins the 25th running of the Southern 500. Winston Cup at Ontario, California Motor Speedway. Bobby Allison was driving for Roger Penske. A.J. Foyt was there. Richard Petty would start from pole position. When the green dropped, Foyt and yellow would challenge Petty for the early lead with David Pearson watching from third. That red, white, and blue number 12 is Allison in fourth in the AMC Matador. The record-setting pace in the first half of the event will be slowed by Buddy Baker's crash off turn four. As the grind continued on the track, identical to Indianapolis, Penske watched as Bobby brought the Matador in for a pit stop. This late race caution slowed the pace once again, and it would bring in those running up front. Foyt was in for tires and fuel, and Petty made a brief visit. When racing resumed, Allison fought it out with Foyt, who had won here two years ago. But A.J. would need an extra pit stop, costing him a chance at victory. And the attrition rate continued. Richard dropped out late with a mechanical problem. Allison then was home free. It would be one of four wins for the Allison Penske team. 